Hello friends, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. So we've been learning about the elements of art. Um, we've learned about sh lines, colors, and we're gonna work with shapes today. Now, the fun thing about shapes is that we can use them to draw a whole bunch of different things. And we've talked about them before. When we did our umbrellas, we used rectangles to make our raincoat, and we also used triangles to make the different parts of our umbrella. So we're gonna use shapes today to make a baby fox. And the reason I picked a baby fox is because we have a little baby fox here at my house that likes to run around and come and try to find Georgia and play with her. Um, we don't let Georgia out to play with the baby fox, but it still looks for Georgia. So we're gonna take our paper. This is portrait style, so it's nice and tall. And we're gonna fold the bottom up to the top. And once we get that bottom folded up to the top, we're gonna press down on that fold line to make a nice little crease. Then we're gonna open it back up again. And the reason we're doing that is to split our paper in half. So I'm gonna draw the head up here and the body down here. So right here, on the top half of my paper, we're gonna start with the head. Now we're gonna use kind of a square, but we're gonna round the corners of the square. Instead of putting points on them, we're gonna make them round so that it's not, that our fox doesn't look like a box. So we're not making a Minecraft fox. We are making a cartoony fox. So when I get close to this fold line, I'm going to curve the line go right around along that fold line and I'm gonna turn and curve the line back up again just like that all right now up here I'll lift that up a little bit so they're about the same height I'm gonna draw a diagonal line down from both of the tops of that letter it looks like a letter U from the top of both of those letter U's and then I'm gonna connect them with a slightly curved line just like that now down here this is the head of the fox. I'm gonna create a little curved line. So that's gonna be my little fox's nose. And I'm going to draw a line. See where this nose touches this line? I'm gonna draw a curved line, or you might say a candy cane, up to the side of my U, or my fox's head. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start where the nose touches the bottom of my U, or my square. And I'm gonna draw my line up and over to the side so my candy cane is backwards. Everybody see that? In these two sections, I'm gonna draw little circles for the eyes, just like that. It's cute, isn't it? All right, so now we're gonna draw the shoulders for our fox, for his little body, and we're gonna start right here where this line starts to leave and curve. We're gonna start right there and we're gonna just draw a little, little bit of a line right there, curved line do a little bit of a curved line there. We are using curved lines because we're drawing an animal and animals in nature don't really have hard corners um, or sharp edges. They're round just like plants. Um, just like you and I, we don't really have any sharp edges. Sometimes we have knobby knees and elbows but they're still rounded. Now I'm going to draw a half circle almost like another U but it's going to be more rounded on the bottom. And I'm going to start over here on the right, and I'm going to go down, 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 almost to the bottom of my paper, and I'm going to turn my crayon, and I'm going to go woo up, just like that. And guess what? I did that on purpose. You don't want to meet that line. You want to go out to the side. And the reason why is because this is going to be our little tail that is wrapping around our cute little fox so that he's snuggled up nice and cozy. And when I do this, I want to make a point. Whoops, I'm going to make a point. So we're going to kind of come out like that. Boom, just like that. That nice little fox's tail. And I'm going to actually bring it around a little bit more, just like that. I'm going to use a zigzag line right here to create the tip of his furry little tail. And then my little fox is done. Now, obviously I need to draw this line down to meet here so that it doesn't look like he's got a little hole. So look at that adorable little fox. Now, little itty bitty foxes usually stay um, nice and safe. Their mommies leave them in a nice little um, 
nest. It's not called a nest. They'll have to look up what it's called, but they keep them in a nice safe place. And so in order for our friendly little fox to be in his little habitat, his little home that his mommy has made for him, we're going to, after we color him in, create leaves that we're going to put on here. So real quick, let's put some little triangles here in his little ears so he can hear everything that's going on around him because if he starts to hear something that scares him while mommy is out looking for food for him, he's gonna need to hunker down in his safe little burrow. So now that we have our little fox in place, we're gonna draw some leaves over here on the side and on the top. And we can even draw some big pieces of grass maybe because they like to be in little, a whole bunch of thatches of tall grass lots of leaves where they can stay nice and safely hidden. So we'll use some really tall wavy lines that are almost like a triangle shape. You could draw triangle shapes that are really tall and skinny to make grass blades that are really tall that will do a really good job hiding our little fox who's poking out so we can see him just to say, hello, how are you little friends? Um, but he's gonna go back in real soon. So he is safe and warm and snuggly right where his mommy left him. We'll draw a few more pieces of grass right here and we'll go ahead and let him come down below his tail. Now notice what I did over here. When I drew a piece of grass, I'm gonna draw another one so you can see it just in case you missed it these two times. I start up here and I draw that little triangle. I don't draw through his tail because this grass is behind his little tail. I go over top, so I stop, I hop, and I finish the line right there, all right? Now, up here, I'm gonna draw some leaves because he's probably under a bush somewhere. So we'll draw a wiggly line right there and maybe make it another one right next to it so it looks like a little bit of a thick branch there. And we're gonna draw some leaves here. Now, he is also in front of these leaves because he poked out so we could see him a little bit. Isn't that nice? So we could say, hello, little fox. How are you, friend? All right. Now, when I draw my leaves, I sometimes use an oval and put points on the end, and sometimes I use a heart shape to make my leaves. So here is a heart shape I'll show you. I just draw that squiggly line to make it look like there's a stem. That's my squiggly line. And then we draw the heart shape, kind of like that. See that? You know what looks like hearts? Um, the leaf that looks like hearts? Morning glory flowers. They're really pretty purple flowers. They look like trumpets. They, their leaves look like hearts. All right, so I have another one. Now this leaf, I'm making it look like it's behind that grass because I stopped and hopped over that grass so that I didn't draw a line through it because I don't necessarily want to have all of my lines mixing together because then if I did that, we wouldn't be able to see all the really great lines that we drew. So I have space for one more over here. So I'm gonna draw one more cute little leaf, just a itty bitty little baby one. It's a new spring growth or fall growth, or it was a summer growth, but it was at the last little bit. So now it's just stayed tiny. All right, so now that I have all of my lines drawn, I'm going to color this cute little fox in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my crayons out here. Have a little bit of fun with them. Okay, this is gonna be fun. I think you guys will like this. And I, my fox is orange, so I'm gonna pull out this red orange, but I'm also gonna pull out a brown because I'm gonna mix those together to make my fox's body. I definitely need my white and I'm gonna use my pink. And that's what we're gonna start with. We're, oops, where'd that purple come from? We're going to start with these colors and we're gonna use these colors to color in our fox. So we're gonna start in the middle and work our way out. So I'm going to, alrighty. I'm going to very gently color in, and this is, um, red orange. Now the reason I'm doing red orange um, is because foxes tend to have an orange color coat of fur, 
but it's not a bright, bright orange. So I'm doing red orange and I'm coloring it lightly. Now you don't have to color all the way up against the black line. I would actually say don't color right up to the black line because if we do, it might mix in with the orange and we don't want our orange color to get dirty looking. We want it to be really pretty. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here between my black crayon line and where I'm coloring orange. And if you need to just kind of go around and trace it so you remember to do that, you can do that, that's fine. So I'm gonna do it just like that. And then I'm gonna just start coloring in. And I'm coloring in it very lightly. And the reason I'm coloring lightly is because I'm gonna use my brown crayon and I'm gonna come back and color right over top of all of this pretty red orange so that it looks a little bit brownish. It's not gonna be bright, bright orange. It's gonna look a, like a little bit more of a burnt orange, um, like a fall leaf color, which is the, the color that they kind of look. Um, it's not a bright, bright orange. And then I just go in here around the ears, just like that. See, I notice I am leaving a little bit of space between the color and the black crayon. And I'm doing that because I don't want any of that black crayon to mix in with this color, but also because we're gonna do something fun with our black marker at the very, very end. Now. I am being a little bit looser with my coloring than I normally am, as you can see, and that's because I'm going to take this brown crayon right here. I'm gonna go right over top. Very, I'm doing this one lightly too, but see how it starts to make that look a little bit more like a fall orange? It's not as bright. It's made it look a little bit more burnt, but it's really cool looking. And of course, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go over it one more time with the red orange crayon again. And that's going to be so neat looking. You are going to love it. And this is one of the things that is really fun to do with crayons is mix our colors together. And if we start off light enough, it's really easy to do. If we color too heavy with our crayon really fast, it makes it a little bit harder to mix our colors. But when we use a very light hand to do it, almost like a whisper color, it makes layering those colors one on top of the other a lot easier. All right, so we're almost done with that brown. I'm gonna do one more layer of red orange over top of it so you can see that. Oh, there we go. I'll just do a little bit of red orange right over top. So uh, this is just gonna make it nice and thick. And that's a good thing because remember I told you we have a special little treat. I'm gonna show you a neat little trick with the black marker at the end of this that you guys are gonna think is the coolest thing ever, all right? So I'm going back over the brown areas with a little bit of the red orange. All right, so my face is done. I'm gonna use those same steps, red orange, then brown, then red orange again, down here in the body of my fox. Now here, let me do my ears real quick. I'm gonna use the pink to do my ears and the, the pink I'm not gonna mix another color with. I'm just gonna do just the pink. And I am leaving a little bit of space um, not going right up to the black crayon line because I don't want to pull that black crayon into my pink crayon. I don't want my pink crayon to look dirty. So I'm going to do the same thing with the white. I'm going to use the white and it's really hard to see when you're coloring with white crayon on white paper. So what I would suggest is you can always turn your paper, um, hold, hold your paper up to the side and you can look at it from the side and you can see if there's a little bit of a wax there so you know if you colored it in. You don't wanna color over top of the eye, we're gonna color that in black. But we definitely wanna get his little white patches around his eyes so he looks like he has his cute little mask on. Colored in really well. That's almost done. I probably need to work on that a little bit more. And we're gonna color in his little eyes and his little nose with the black crayon. So getting him colored in here real well. Give him his cute little black eyes, little button eyes. So cute, you just wanna pinch his cheeks. I bet you you guys have your grandparents who say that about you or even aunts and uncles. All right, 
Your mommies and daddies might even say that about you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do fast forward. I'm gonna color in the rest of baby fox, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do the grass around him, and then I'm gonna show you the fun little trick with the marker. All right, friends, how are we doing so far? Are you guys having fun? I hope so. Um, I love playing with colors and I love mixing colors. And this one here, you can see a lot of my different strokes that I made when I was coloring. And I'm okay with that on this project simply because when we use that marker, and I show you that fun trick with the marker afterwards, it's gonna look really neat, almost like a stained glass picture, which is kind of the effect that we're gonna go for. Um, and you're gonna love it. I'm really excited to show you. We're gonna do a lot of similar things with the grass and the leaves that we did with the fox. Now, with the grass here, we can make it look a little bit brown if we want to. Um, since it is fall and things are starting to change colors, you could use a brown or an orange if you wanted to, but you definitely want to use a green. So these are the three colors I'm going to play around with here on my grass. And what I'll probably do is I'll just do a little bit of brown, very lightly, very, very lightly with the brown. If you have a lighter color brown, like a tan or a khaki, use that instead. I don't have a lighter color. Um, I have a yellow but the yellow is not really going to do what I want it to do which is why I grabbed the orange too but if you have a khaki or a, or a tan a light brown even a peach might work actually because um, that's a, a lighter orange um, I do have a yellow orange so I am going to play around with that a little bit so I have brown here very very lightly you can barely see it. And I'm gonna come in with this orange just a little bit and I'm only gonna color one side of the grass blade with the orange. I'm not gonna color the whole thing with the orange, just one side of it. And this one is really skinny, so it's gonna be hard to do. So I'm not as worried about that. Now, here, because these grass blades are so, so narrow, um, and there's not a lot of white paper even in between them, it's not as important for you to stay away from the, the black crayon edge. Do you want to try to um, so that it doesn't pull that black crayon into the colors and, and uh, make the colors look um, dirty? But with this grass, since we're making it look like it's getting ready to switch colors in fall, um, it's, a, it's okay if it does pull in a little bit. So there is my grass. So that was pretty easy, wasn't it? So I'm going to do that with the other side as well. Let me show you what I'm going to do with my leaves real quick. And then we'll put me back on fast forward so you can see me do my speed coloring. Please do not try to speed color at home. I do not want you to sprain a finger or a hand or a wrist. Just take your time and be neat. My speed coloring is, um, not really speed coloring. I get to use technology to make it look like I color faster than I do. So trust me, I'm not really that fast of a color. So I'm gonna set these three colors to the side and I'm gonna get my green here. And really I'm probably just gonna keep it simple up here since I'm doing so much here and I did so much in the fox and I don't wanna take away from those and what I did there. So I'm just gonna do a really pretty green right here. And then once I get my grass and my leaves done, I'm gonna color in my background. So I'm gonna do brown here where my little fox is sitting. He's probably sitting on a bunch, a bunch of twigs or pine needles or 
dirt. And then behind him, back here, I'm going to use a blue for the sky. Um, so I'm going to, again, do my speed coloring. And you'll be able to see all of that on my speed coloring. Um, and I am going to do this, leave this space, a little bit of space between the color and the black line. And the reason for that is because our last step, it's also our fun little mystery step, um, is going to need that space. So I'm gonna go into a speedy mode here. I will talk to you in just a bit. All right, friends, are you ready for this surprise? So I just need a black marker and a paintbrush with an itty bitty little bit of water. We don't need too much. And I'm using the paintbrush instead of a water a spray bottle with water because um, the paintbrush will help me control the water and keep it neater so I don't have as big of a mess to clean up. So I'm gonna take my black marker and I'm gonna just trace right over top of those black crayon lines. And I'm using the broad side of my marker. That means I'm using this side, not just the tip. And look, you can tell I have a little bit of white crayon on there because it picked it up with the marker tip. Here, I'm not using as much of the broad side because that's the little ear. Here, I'm gonna use the broad side. I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna stay right on top of that black crayon line as much as I can. Right there. There we go. I'm tracing my eyes. Tracing my nose. So all of the lines that we use to draw our little fox with, as well as our leaves, and our grass with. Those are the lines we're gonna trace. Now I probably should have started up at the top with my leaves first, so that I don't have to drag my hand through this marker because unfortunately, marker does stay wet for a little while, especially if it's laying on top of crayon like that right there, because crayon is made of wax and wax tends to repel the marker. Did you guys know that? Because the marker is a water-based paint um so it the wax repels it it pushes it away it says nope i'm here you move on so that's why we left a little bit of a space between our color the areas that we colored and the lines that we drew with because i want this black marker to fill in that space so it kind of creates this really neat little border between all of the shapes that we drew and almost makes it look like it could be a stained glass window or a piece, yeah, a really pretty piece of stained glass. So it's gonna probably feel really funny trying to trace right on top of that crayon. Um, it's gonna feel sticky um, when you're drawing, when you're tracing right over top of it, trying to pull that marker right over top of the crayon, but we want to do it. And the reason we're doing it is because we want that marker to settle into some of those spaces that were left open from the crayons. And that's what we're going to use the water and the paintbrush for. The water and the paintbrush are going to help push that paint from the marker into the spaces on our paper that were left empty and void of crayons. So all of those white spaces that I told you to leave between um, the different colors, those are all gonna be filled in with this black crayon. So when you are coloring your background, 
hopefully you did do a nice heavy layer of crayon. If you didn't, go ahead and stop right now and go back and add a heavier layer. You can see how those lines are starting to get thicker and darker. The ones that I've traced over with marker are darker than the ones that are only in crayon. So that's the other thing that this does is it really makes those really great lines and shapes that we drew just stand out. And we like doing things that make our picture stand out so that people stop and look. Because then if we have a story to tell and we put it on paper in a picture form, people are going to be stopping, looking at our art and seeing our story. And that's a really cool way to talk to people and let them get to know a little bit about you or for you to get to know a little bit about them. All of our art is affected by things that we experience in life, things that we've seen, places that we've gone, people that we've met. All of those things help shape our art. They shape who we are. Pretty neat, huh? That's what makes art so personal. It's also what makes it scary for a lot of people to try to do because we definitely put so much of ourselves into our art and it makes it really personal. All right, so this guy is almost done. This is my last little line. George is excited. That means that daddy's probably home. And I'm gonna take my paintbrush and run it along all of these lines. 